Hello team, welcome to yet another episode of Inspire with AR Pro. So team, you know that we have two CDs, one is Rev Up and the other one is Inspire. Inspire is for people who have grown in the auto industry and have become entrepreneurs. So like uh, you've already seen a lot of other members earlier also who have shared their success stories as an entrepreneur. This Inspire series also has a brand new guest who will share his story with us on how he moved on from employment to an, being an entrepreneur. And not only that, he is a person who started his career in the auto industry as a trainee at a dealership. And from there, he has grown to co-founding a wonderful automobile consulting company. So, of course, you will get to meet him and know him. But before that, AR Pro is the world's largest network of professionals from the auto industry. If you are not on RevUp yet, immediately go to our website, autoretailpro.com mentioned below and register yourself. So team, let me tell you about today's guest. So he started his career in the retail industry at a dealership in the after sales department as a trainee. And from there, he has climbed up the ladder in the same company. The best part is he started his career with one company and ended his career as an employee in the same company. And from there, he sat, went on to uh, build his own business. And today, he is the co-founder of a company called Grow Change Global. So now you can know more about him from himself. So over to you, Pro Hari Krishna. Thank you, Srikant. <clears throat> Thank you for that wonderful introduction. Uh, friends, my name is Hari Krishnan, and as uh, Srikanth has told you, um, I'm not sure how inspiring will be my story, but definitely I think when I share my learnings through uh, my career, uh, I think it can help uh, at least few of you to have a clear uh, picture about your future and how you can build it up. So uh, to start my story, let me tell you, I was born in Trivandrum. Uh, I am the only son of my parents. My father, Shri K. Sanjay Nair, actually he used to work as plant manager in Travangu Titanium Products, uh, a chemical factory in Trivandrum. And my mom is Dr. Shri Kumariyama. Actually, she retired as a principal of University College Trivandrum. So being the one and only son, you know, I was uh, brought up properly. And uh, to talk about my family, I'm married to Gatha Hare Krishnan. She's a business owner and uh, we have uh, two sons. Nanda Gopal and Ram Gopal and Nanda Gopal has just finished his uh, uh, B.Tech honors in electronics and, and communication engineering and my younger son Ram Gopal he has now just got started in his B.A. journalism course. So that's about my family. Uh, my connection with automobile I would say I think it, it starts right from my birth you know like because uh, I was born as an automobile enthusiast if, if I can say. Because if I take my memories back, you know, the first picture which comes to my mind in my memory has got a car in it. And that was a six cylinder Chevrolet Fleet Master 1948, which was owned by my grandfather. So, and my father, you know, was a great lover of cars. And uh, he uh, used to keep the car so very well that I have uh, seen him cleaning the car every day in the morning as well as in the night. And whenever he used to take his car outside, he will clean it. And when he brings the car back home, also he cleans the car. So that's those are the memories I have. I remember him owning a you know standard Herald way back in the 1970. You know, like uh, when my memories are there. You know, and he used to get um, uh, uh, you know the cars all repaired at home itself because he was so particular about the quality of the work which goes into the uh, you know like uh, repair. Uh, he was, uh, you know, I can say we might not have trusted the people, you know, like he wanted everything to happen in, in front of his eyes. So later we upgraded to ambassador and, uh, you know, like all the works means, you know, the painting, even the engine disassembling and um, giving it for measuring outside and bringing it back, assembling, everything used to happen at home. And so naturally me as a kid, you know, like got so much interested in all these things, whereas uh, it was not like... Uh, uh, the kids in the present time, you know, where, you know, all these uh, attention gets attracted to a 6.5 inch screen. The whole world is on 6.5 inch screen. As, uh, you know, we jokingly say, after in infancy, uh, the most critical time is not teenage. There is something which comes in between that's called screen age, right? 
So the moment after two years or so, the child gets into the screen age. So, but in those days, as you know, friends, uh, way back in 1970s, we didn't have anything like that. So whatever the dad does, you know, is the most important thing and the most entertaining thing. So, you know, I naturally got uh, attracted to the cars. Now, one of the tasks my father used to do, uh, give me, is to wash the car. And that used to happen once every week. And, uh, you know, like uh, the incentive for uh, me to do all those things, you know, is like uh, I can take the car out of the garage, wash it and park it back. OK, and I used to do it at the age of 11 years. OK, so I, I can proudly say that I could uh, drive a car at the age of 11. So that is the, that is where, you know, I just got infatuated to this automobile world. And uh, like. So I, you know, I just wanted to uh, continue uh, education, automobile engineering, but I was and I am and I think I will be always a family person more like, OK, so I didn't want to leave my parents because automobile engineering was available only at that time in uh, Madras and I think MIT. And uh, so uh, the only option was to study in uh, government engineering college in Trivandrum, which is uh, we fondly refer as CET. So we had mechanical engineering course there and uh, I joined the uh, mechanical engineering course. During my engineering course, uh, way back in 1987, I can tell you, I used to visit a high-tech automobile diagnostic center for getting our cars repaired. And there I met, you know, the owner uh, who was running the show. His name is Mr. D. Shantakumar, you know, who had been in the Air Force and later worked with Mazda in the Gulf countries. He had returned, he had brought all the sophisticated computerized diagnostic equipments, you know, to repair the car. I used to be a regular visitor there and I learned a lot from him. Honestly, my thanks goes to him as he helped me a lot in understanding the computerized diagnostics. In, at those day, in those days, we didn't even have a desktop for that matter, you know. You know, so it was a, it was a fantastic experience for me. And uh, I always feel that, you know, when the student is ready, the teacher will automatically appear. So in those days, you know, my next teacher uh, came through one Mr. Ramesh Nair. You know, he used to work as a lecturer in the polytechnic and he's a wizard in electronics, let me tell you. And he was in the you know, process of developing uh, an electronics in electronic ignition system uh, module for conventional ignition cars. You know, in those days, I can tell you that was in I can tell you in 1990. The only car in India which had an electronic ignition system was Contessa. Okay, and every other car, including all models of Maruti, were all running with conventional ignition system with the ignition coil and CB point and things like that. Now, I got the opportunity to work with him uh, in this uh, particular project, and we could bring out a fantastic uh, electronic ignition system by which, you know, uh, one or two wires can be bypassed, and there is a unit inside the car which can be where so there's a switch where you can switch over to conventional system or, you know, like uh, electronic ignition system without removing any part of the car. And it used to give, um, let me tell you, 15% more fuel efficiency. Also, you know, like it uh, uh, helps, uh, you know, come out of the hassles of cold starting and all sorts of engine missing, hunting and all sort of, sort of ignition problems. OK, so that was a wonderful uh, experience, I can tell you. And uh, in those days, my only two passions were to spend time with uh, my electronics guru, Ramesh Chetan, whom I fondly refer to, okay? And even today, whenever we get time, we get together, you know, like thinking about a lot of innovative things, you know? So uh, my only passion those days was, you know, like spending time with uh, uh, people like them and also music. And I had a music troupe of my own uh, because I loved singing and uh, my father used to my, be my coach because he is uh, also a renowned singer in All India Radio. So and of course my mother always then and even now is my best talent maker I can tell you with all support uh, both in education as well as in co-curricular activities. So with this background I passed out of engineering college you know though I got campus placements in Pune and Chennai I as you all would have guessed by now it was a family guy who wanted to stick around Kerala and uh, if not in Trivandrum. And that's when, when I saw the advertisement in the, Kutu, uh, in the newspaper, Kutukar and Group calling for uh, graduate engineer trainees for their machine tools factory, which is called uh, Kutukar and Machine Tools uh, way back in 1991. So I still remember there were 300 people who appeared for the written test in question, which was then reduced to 60 for the first interview, then to 20 for the second interview. And uh, let me tell you, uh, out of the 20, uh, you know, like nine people got the call letter after the second interview. 
and uh, 10 people got a well drafted rejection letter okay that you know gentleman uh, you were really good uh, but you know i don't we don't think you are the person we are looking for and wish you a bright future and things like that now you know one thing i didn't receive any of these i was feeling so upset i was thinking whether it, I, I was not even worth receiving a rejection letter okay so few days later i received a telegram saying that your name has been referred to our sister concern, Mrs. Poplar Vehicles and Services Limited, okay? And as you know, they were the only dealers for Maruti in the whole of Kerala. Okay, so I was so happy that I got the opportunity to work with an automobile company and that too in Kerala. And that was the first time in life I realized that every seed of adversity has an equal or more potential of prosperity. So I felt bad when I didn't get even a rejection letter, but when I got this, I understood this was the company where I was supposed to work, not the machine tools factory. Okay. So in the final discussion, I met Mr. Sajud K. Thomas, the MD of uh, Poplar, who I can, I can tell you later became my best mentor throughout the career. And that's a very eventful story, which I'll be telling you. Now, then I was asked to undergo a two weeks training in Cochin, where I had to stay in a training center, which had a hostel also attached. And that was the first time I was staying away from my parents, okay? And it was tough. It was very tough. But the care given by our trainer, Mr. Prapagar Menon, was so good, I can tell you, that I could see an extended home at the training center. I still remember, you know, seeing the banners on the walls, like accidents do not happen, they are caused. Feedback is a breakfast of champions. You can't help the poor by destroying the rich and so on, okay? Those were my first learnings. So those two weeks were more of, you know, classroom trainings. And after that, you know, we all reported for the on the job training at their Marathi Service Center in Elamekara. Uh, to my surprise, we were asked to wash the car, <clears throat> especially the underbody. OK. And, uh, you know, like it was very tough, you know, like uh, and uh, many of the graduate uh, and trainees, you know, I, I don't think they'll be feeling comfortable about uh, doing all that. Those. But I remember the words of the manager there. He said. Friends, it is very easy to do the work, but it is very difficult to get the work done through others. So if only you know how to do the work on your own, you will be able to get the work done from others. So that was one of the best teachings I can ever get. You know, like I just started doing that. Uh, and, you know, I, I'll tell you for my young friends here, you know, uh, initial feeling which I had in my mind was, you know, like, oh my God, if I wash the car and the staff sees me washing the car, I'm an engineer, you know, and tomorrow when I become the manager, will they respect me? Will they think that, oh, this guy was the one who washed the car like that they feel, you know, that was my problem. But let me tell you, uh, later I realized that, you know, those who saw me washing the car, actually they had high respect for me. And they used to tell the younger generation to, you know, don't play around with this guy. He knows in and out of the street, you know, um, he, he has done almost all the work here. He has over all the breaks on his own. He has done periodic service on his own. And he knows the game, man. So be better be careful, you know, like, like that, you know, I have heard people saying, you know, so uh, that is that is how I, uh, you know, like uh, that was my preliminary uh, training period, you know, and that, that was an exhaustive training we had. Now. I think we, we were there around for around two months. Uh, and we, meanwhile, my eyes got stuck at a fantastic uh, uh, equipment, which was six feet high and four feet in width. And it was kept at one end of the service center with uh, covered, but it was full of dust. I realized that it's a computerized diagnostic equipment, you know, called interrogator. And that was manufactured by a, a company called Sun Computers from the USA. And I came to know that it cost 4.5 lakhs way back in 1991. Okay, so you can guess how much it would be worth now. So the company bought, though the company bought this unit, one for Cochin and one for, uh, you know, Trivandrum, it was not used at all because the, the, the equipment, I can tell you, just got a boom with a lot of wires hanging from there and there are transducers which are connected to the different points in the car, including the oil dipstick. You can remove the oil dipstick and put this thing there to temp te test the temperature of the car. Everything is uh, routed through this computer and this computer can uh, interrogate, you know, it can talk to the um, uh, car in the sense, you know, and get the data and uh, give the inferences as to how to be correct. And it has got, it had got a pollution analyzer also, everything put together. So this equipment was kept like a white elephant, a dead investment. 
So as you might have guessed now, you know, I started putting time there because I had my little bit of background with computer diagnostics. So everything happens in life for a reason. That's what I, I, I learned from there, you know. So then I spent some after office hours in that with that computer. And finally, to cut this long story short, I could uh, the, the why it was not working is because the, the code for a three cylinder engine with conventional ignition system was not available. So, you know, in, in few days, somehow I could, God's grace, I could find the code. And I was super excited. I ran to the manager's cabin and to tell him that, you know, sir, I found the code. Uh, but to my shock, I didn't find the manager there. Okay. Then I realized that he has already put in his papers and he is leaving. So I didn't know where to go. So I talked to people around. You know, yeah, friend, you know, I found this code. You know, let's work on that. Nobody was interested. I don't know why. One of them sarcastically told me, why don't you go to the managing director himself? <laughs> okay. So I was shocked. You know, how can I go? I don't know whether he will, um, uh, he will listen to me in full, whether he will shout at me for coming during office hours. So I contemplated and finally I put everything on a piece of paper, whatever I wanted to convey, got it typed. And then uh, at six o'clock in the evening after the office hours, I, uh, you know, with the trembling legs, I went to his office. He was there. Uh, I didn't know that the manager will be there after office hours too, but he was there. It was a chance I took. And I just came, I went there with trembling hands. I gave that cover with that letter to him. He just looked at me. He asked me who I am. And uh, then I told who I am and he had recognized me. And he said, okay. And then gave me a nod that I can go. So I just walked. I can still see that scene. You know, I just walked out of that uh, office. And by the time I reached my uh, in a scooter, uh, which was parked uh, downstairs, you know, the security came running and said, you know, the sir wants to meet you. So I was called back to his office. Uh, by the time I believe he has read whatever uh, was written there and uh, he asked me a few questions and I believe I gave him uh, some few answers which was convincing to him. And he said, you know, I want to discuss this thing with the manager in Trivandrum branch, Mr. Burgis Paul, and um, uh, we will come together and see what is happening. And, uh, you know, then they came and uh, uh, Varghese Paul was the, I would say, I would say the technical expert in those days in that company. Later, he became the GM too. We fondly referred to him as Varghese Ayrton. Thanks goes to him because, you know, he came and he was convinced and he took me from there to Trivandrum because there was one another equipment lying in Trivandrum. So, you know that my, my family is in Trivandrum. So, you know, I was too happy that, you know, I got, uh, uh, you know, a little bit of, in a temporary transfer to Trivandrum and we got the machine running here and uh, it started getting, um, uh, I mean, earning around 500 rupees per day way back in 1991, which was nowhere a bad figure at all. Okay. So then I continued there. I studied a lot. I learned a lot from Varghese Satan, you know, like the technical aspects of Maruti car. And I still remember that I had my guru. I had seen my gurus on the technicians too, in the technicians too. One Mr. Johnny was there who helped me a lot. And today he is a very successful regional manager, I can tell you. So one thing which I want to tell you, friends, is that, you know, uh, you know, one great lesson is that if you're really confident about what you know, fear not, friends, to meet or talk about that to the stakeholders. That's one important thing which I learned, you know, because you, if you're confident, then just go ahead. That's all. So then, uh, you know, the next triggering point came when the company had, uh, arranged a mega training program, I can tell you, and uh, from right from the washing boys to the general manager in multiple batches. The training was done by one Mr. Sugumaran Nair, who, is, who was working with uh, Sandoz India, that, I mean, who just retired from there. You know, I was always fond of trainings because I, saw, I knew, friends, that whatever we feed neck up always pays more than whatever you do for neck down, okay, because that is going to stay. So I was eager to learn more things. Uh, I think that is one of the uh, uh, messages I want to give you, like, you know, never, never, ever be think that you we have learned a lot and it is enough because learning is one which keeps all of us young. Okay, uh, if you are worried about aging, just start learning, you know, you will get younger and younger. So like uh, I just I attended that training program and in that training program, uh, somehow, you know, uh, the the trainer, Mr. Sugumar and I liked me very much. And he uh, requested uh, the management to uh, make me attend all the other training programs too as an associate for the trainer. OK, so that was a mind. I mean, I would say the game changing thing for me.
and after that he recommended the, uh, to the management that you know, this guy is should not be just asked to work on breaks and things like that so he has to be given little more responsibilities and you know uh, the managing director actually took the bold step of you know like giving me a different role which was named as technical coordinator there was no name like that no post like that uh, still then in the uh, in the, that company and uh, I uh, was promoted, I would say, uh, given a different role as technical coordinator. And my job was going, was going around all the branches and doing the technical coordination, giving support and things like that. Uh, you know, that job involved, in fact, talking to the concerned manager there and getting some things done through him too, which I think you know, by now you would have understood that it's not an easy thing at all. I am just a one year old guy, you know, like just uh, in, the, in the company. Uh, trying to go and tell us if we can do like this, this would be better. If we can do like this, that'd be better. That was the toughest thing ever in my career, let me tell you. But I learned a lot. I, again, my thanks goes to my mentor, Sajid Thomas, you know, because he was very kind enough. He put up with me. He uh, tried to, um, uh, you know, help me out in all those aspects. And finally, I learned the biggest lesson of, you know, management, you know. Manage, management, I always say it is M-A-N-A-G-E, M-E-N-T, manage men tactfully. So, you know, like uh, that was something which I learned because, you know, you are trying to talk to people who are at your level and above. Okay, so like that, you know, I would say um, uh, that was one tremendous period I had, you know, like, so then after that, you know, like uh, I uh, got the, uh, you know, a lot of opportunities from the company. One of those was, you know, like um, uh, they're developing a lot of uh, tools for the company, like diagnostic tools. And then, you know, like uh, we, I was part of training the, the technicians to appear for the uh, Marathi skill contest, you know, in the national level. And uh, I'm so happy to say that, you know, I was part of the team which got number one, not only one year, but in many years in a row. Okay. So another great person like, you know, who helped me to learn how to deal with customers uh, and to ensure delight is none other than Wing Commander GM Babu, you know, who was a service manager of Trivandrum branch. My heartfelt thanks goes to him, you know, like, because he was the ultimate in customer handling. I have seen exploding customers going to his cabin, okay, exploding customers. And after 30 minutes, the customers come out of the room and they, as they close the door, they say, so Babu, uh, we need to get together for dinners very soon. Well, I was thinking, you know, guys are going in an exploding manner and coming back like this, you know. So I learned from him the art of empathizing and giving practical solution to the problem, which was very much acceptable to the customers. Learned a lot, let me tell you. That was one of another learnings I got. Uh, in the meantime, you know, like I got promoted as assistant manager, deputy manager, the I2 full, I became full charge, gave, I was given the full charge of Trivandrum branch in 1995 before I celebrated the 25th birthday okay I still remember my managing director telling me that the only apprehension we have is your age okay because I was supposed to manage 100 people and some of them are elder than me not someone most of them were elder than me okay so that was the situation of course you know like uh, I took it up as a lunch I could get some good inputs from uh, my colleague in Cochin, who is uh, Mr. Renjan Kenayar, you know, like he also, you know, gave me some inputs and uh, uh, I knew that I have to ensure that I don't take any immature decisions. OK, uh, so I, I, I can tell you I was very careful because I had 100 people working in the branch. I learned through my experience, friends, and experience is something which we we'll get from doing mistakes. And let me tell you, and mis experience is the one which will help us from not doing the same mistake again okay so I, I, I and the mistakes are done by only people who do something somebody who says that i've never fallen from a bicycle why because i've never tried it okay so you know if somebody tries you know he might fail but that's okay so like that you know uh, i learned which i want to share with my dear friends here you know five things you know which we need to keep in mind to become a good uh, manager i can tell you one is work knowledge, okay? You need to have the proper work knowledge, friends. The second thing is good behavior. You know, you need to be a good human being, you know, like good the behavior you need to process, you know, like not calling bad words and things like that. And the third one is be a good motivator. When you see good things happening, please, we have, we have to definitely appreciate that. You know, I always believe that, you know, praise in public and reprimand in private is the best uh, motto. 
And the fourth thing I understood is developer. We need to help people develop, you know, like I can proudly say that, you know, I was one of uh, those um, managers who had helped many engineers under me become managers. Okay, so that is very important when you bring people up from different levels, you know, like when we are uh, focused on going up the rungs of a ladder, give me a holding hand to the next person, you, you can definitely bring them up too. It is only when we stop learning, we don't want to go up. It is at that time we try to stagnate and we, we, we unknowingly tend to stagnate other people too. Okay. So, you know, like I understood that these five things, you know, like work knowledge, good behavior, motivating development and pro and fifth one is protection. We need to protect our people too. You know, like a, a good leader always protects his people too. So like that, um, you know, these five qualities, I just want to give you a tip. If you, if any one of us has got at least one of these five qualities, we will be accepted by people. And as time passes, when we learn and acquire them, the rest of the qualities, people will start respecting, people will start admiring, and uh, you only believe some people will even start adoring you as a great leader and manager. Okay. So anyway, um, our MD, Saju Thomas, kept on giving me challenging initiatives, which I took up as a great opportunity to learn and grow. I strongly believe success is something which happens when preparedness meets opportunity. So, you know, there was a lot of uh, challenges put forward, like the, I still remember the individualized incentive scheme, uh, the two tech based system, which was never heard in 1998, I can tell you, where two people are working in the same uh, uh, way where, you know, the younger guy will get taught by the elder one, you know, also senior one and things like that. Then we even tried a service line concept, just like production line, you know, where, you know, each and every activity happens at, uh, at a particular station you know, with the tat and all, you know, they're like, similarly, we had uh, the service also done in the service and concept. You still remember the seven minute checkup concept we brought in where people were, the, you know, we our team was there in the petrol bunks where, you know, when the cars come for petrol, uh, putting petrol, we used to pay the bill. I mean, I mean, of course, collecting the money from the customer only, but we used to you do the process. But in that meantime, that seven minute of petrol uh, filling, we used to do a 18 point checkup on in that seven minutes. OK, and we used to give a report. And the idea was, you know, we used to get the, you know, like uh, data of the cars. And we were surprised, we, though being uh, the a, a dealer, uh, the prime dealer, you know, in the in the market, 66% of the vehicles were not coming to our service center. They were all going somewhere, going to the local workshops in those days. You know, we could gather a lot of uh, uh, new, I mean, customers back. And uh, from, uh, can you believe that in, within a year's time, we could double the service load, double. It's not, uh, you know, 100% increase in the service load. So, you know, a lot of uh, activities like that were being, we were being done. And the company sent us for foreign trips in the year 1996, where even OEMs were thinking about sending people, you know, to foreign trips. And I remember my first trip was to China via Singapore to visit the most popular uh, auto mechanic show, which was uh, actually happens in Frankfurt, which was hosted in China. My first foreign trip. I'm very sensitive about food, dear friends, being one and only son of my parents, not going outside and all. I never forget the care given to me by Mr. John K. Paul, one of the directors of Popular Group, who take, took care of me all through the group, all through the, through the trip, I can tell you. Uh, my whole heartfelt thanks. I understood the meaning of care, you know. Uh, you know, it is not like, uh, the, the, you know, the top management, you know, like is not only just managing, you know, the care is also a very important factor. Little did I know that there were many more foreign trips uh, to follow. I think I had visited around nine countries in a span of 10 years, which included incentive trips from Maruti in 1998 as uh, Trivandrum Service was awarded the most innovative dealership award. So meanwhile, I, after getting qualified as an internal auditor for ISO 9016 from AIB Wincourt in Belgium, we could organize a team to help six outlets qualified for ISO in one go, which was a record for any dealer till then. Okay. So later, since I was always having good relationship with the sales division, I can tell you, I was handpicked by Mr. Sushil Kumar, who was a CEO and mentor. He is a great guy, you know, like um, he's an economics postgraduate. He's uh, into law um, um, post-graduation. He has done his uh, marketing management with uh, Bajaj Institute. He was working with uh, GIC and uh, he had joined Popular and he was with us as CEO and uh, 
with this help we bought so out so many value addition package for customers like popular unlimited car care package and so on you know with the right equation with sales you know i could find myself getting involved in sales marketing and branding initiatives also one of the excellent initiatives steered by sushil kumar was vision 2000 okay where we collectively designed a vision statement for the company as that you know that popula will be perceived as the best company by customers by principal by employees and by public by year 2000 so you know that was a 3 to 5 year plan which we had and it was a uh, those that vision we made it into a reality by making even the washing boy uh, you know think about what he should do for that i just give an example friends might be useful to you you know what the telephone operator's um, decision was i will take the phone before the third ring you know what one of the person in the administration had decided i will reply to a mail within 24 hours okay so like that you know everybody started putting uh, you know the uh, and the company from the company side we brought that uh, individualized incentive scheme so like that in so many and the, the buildings were painted lot many um, things were done you know by everyone and uh, we became the number one dealer selling the highest number of cars in india not for just one year for many many years okay so that so all these things is a collective effort friends you know like and uh, it's all about unity in thinking you know the top management the middle management and the people working you know they are all thinking about saying and the, when the unity of thinking comes i can tell you there comes something called synergy and the power of synergy is invincible i can tell it is amazing now anyway to cut the story short you know like uh, i got promoted as senior manager at the age of 28 regional manager overseeing multiple branches at the age of 31 which used to be a record in those days and in those days i used to work even on sundays and my wife used to say that you know i should have ordered the book thank god it's monday okay because even in sunday on sunday i'm very busy i can say that uh, what i would be i had become in my career is all because of my cho- uh, choice of associating with the right people and accepting them as mentors and learning a lot from them okay because i believe that you know uh, a, a, a teacher can teach what he knows a coach can give you tips and techniques to become successful but a mentor is one who can change your thought process okay so it's very important to have the right mentors and coaches in your life So I learned the art of leading leaders from my managing director Mr. Sajuke Thomas the art of being calm and cool in any crisis creating an environment to find the right solution from Mr. D Krishnan you know who retired as director of finance of Cochin Refines and was our GM in those days the art of being professional and innovative in our approach and the art of branding and marketing from our CEO S Sushil Kumar even the art of winning people's heart through love and care from our HR head Mr. Simon Saver I can tell you Um, amazing i can never forget the support i got from my colleagues all through my career and i'm afraid to name them individually because if in case i miss someone very important that be too bad so my heartfelt thanks to goes all, all of them the next triggering point came in the year 2001 when my father who had undergone two heart attacks by then had to go for a bypass surgery so he wanted to be me to be with him and throughout and i took long leave and i being a family guy started realizing the value and importance of spending more time with my loved ones and uh, i took the decision to take voluntary retirement at the age of 32 from my first and the only job with popular okay so that was that brought me to the end of the 10 years of uh, uh, career as an employee of course i had my own income diversifications in place that helped me take that bold step but i took that decision not because i didn't like my job friends not because i had any relationship problem with anyone it was just because i wanted to give more time to my family you know it was very tough to get myself relieved from my company i still call it as my company because you know uh, it, the relationship was so tight but we mutually agreed to do it with the condition that i would still continue giving service to them as a trainer 6 days a month okay so that's a story and after that uh, i focused on training and i was giving training to the popular group of companies off and on and later uh, i came into consultancy where you know i could even get connected to jagadish khatter who is the uh, you know you know the famous managing director of uh, maruti udyog 
and uh, you know uh, and like that you know few years back i co-founded grow change global as uh, shrikant was telling a consultancy training solutions company where i can say i was blessed to have my own branding marketing guru shushil kumar as one of the co-founders okay and he by then uh, had served as the dean for amrita business school and then as global marketing head of amrita team i also have my friend uh, raja pillai as another co-founder the raja is my engineering college mate but later he took his fca and mba from the us and uh, he started his career with apollo uh, tires and then continued with delphi automotive components and later as one of the directors for mckinsey consultancy in their singapore division now we actually uh, work helping what we do is you know the top management we help the top management in their thinking process and by giving hands on support to the team by participating in the execution with objective of you know i can say well being of client principal customer and most importantly employees because if you, if you don't have happy employees you can never have a happy customer okay and uh, if you can't keep your um, principal happy i don't think you will be having that business that business anymore okay so you know by giving the right combination you know right inputs now uh, many a times the word consultant or consultancy is considered to be with a negative uh, connotation you know like oh consultant you know is like you know he doesn't know how to do it so he's now trying to teach others how to do it or maybe you know it is very good very easy to give gyans and all but you know in actual life that won't happen and like that all people uh, spend, or some people say you no know, only the people who are doing it knows only the leg knows where it uh, pinches where the shoe pinches you heard about it right true friends it's only the leg which knows the best where the shoe pinches but it's the head that knows what is the solution okay so it's it's a combination okay so you know like what we do if you ask me is like you know not just giving the thinking support to the top management we of course help them uh, get the right um, thought process but at the same time we take the responsibility of going down to the floor level and executing it along with the people and creating the results now it is not like you know just a consultant comes one day just give some ideas after two weeks or three weeks he comes and does a review that doesn't happen i i don't believe that will happen because if if uh, people knew how to do that they could have done it it is all you know there will there is lot of uh, slip between the cup and the lip in the sense you know the gyan is there but how the gyan see first it comes in the mind then it comes in the paper and then in the plot or in the process so you know that that uh, gap has to be filled and i think it's a responsibility of the consultant to get it done and i i can tell you that we are we are doing that i have a friend uh, you know mr johnson who uh, used to be the head the chair of popular you know a great friend of mine who always reminds me that i could have made a good ceo and had i continued with popular <laughs> okay but honestly friends i find more satisfaction and feel more enriched enjoying a well balanced life today no not as a ceo but at the same time working with ceos okay so you know it it is it is all about how you look at life friends success has many meanings you know one of the definitions of success i can tell you is uh, all about progressive realization of worthwhile goals okay so the, for that progressive realization of worthwhile goals the first thing we need to have is a goal so initially i can tell you from my experience our goal is to build a good career next the goal is to earn good income and to have better finances third it might be all about getting recognized in different platforms i'm happy and contented to be in the fourth stage friends where i can tell i understand the real meaning of success is measured by how many people are better off in life because you lived in this world i have read a book called uh, uh, the you know the small dash like uh, i was born in 1969 there is a year where i am going to say goodbye to this world so between that you know in the tombstone there is a small dash put you know it is not 1969 that is important or it is not that year where i am going that is important what is important is that small dash in between where what i was supposed to do or what i could have done or what i have done you know that is the most important thing in life so it's all about giving to others what you have which includes knowledge transfer even and that to experiential knowledge friends you know like uh, you know whenever you put knowledge to practice it becomes wisdom so my success mantra if you and anyone asks would be five in number friends okay success happens when preparedness meets opportunity so opportunities you know they come some some people say opportunities never knock twice okay yeah 
I would say the same opportunity will never knock twice. Okay, opportunities will keep coming, but are we prepared to take that? You know, so that's the first question, friends. The second is willingness to learn. I call it as teachability. Okay, willingness to learn. We need to be a learner throughout. The third and most important thing is is having an attitude of gratitude. Okay, we need to be thankful for what we have. But at the same time, we should not feel complacent. Everything is done like that, not like that. So have an attitude of gratitude, friends. Be positive, friends. We always hear attitude, positive, and all. Uh, but you know, many of the many of us don't know what is meant by positive. You know, when you walk and uh, you know, like when your leg um, hits somewhere, you can't say that wow, good things are happening. Yesterday my hand went and hit. That was good. Tomorrow my head will go and hit. That is also good. You know, like in some people, can do another. Some people can do another. Some people can drink another. I don't think people will think like that. I don't think people will think that when they walk and a uh, uh, crow, uh, you know, just um, you know, uh, uh, drops on them. You can't say that. You know, oh, thank God, cows are not flying. Otherwise, cow dung would have fallen. I don't think that's positive. Positive is all about being part of solution, friends. In, instead of highlighting the problem, let's think about solutions. Okay? Yes, problem is there, but instead of highlight the problem. Let's think about solutions. And finally, let me tell you uh, what I learned about success: is be a great server, help and handhold others to become su- successful. Because as I told you, true measure of success is all about how many people are better off because you live. So these are the things I would uh, uh, tell from my experience in life so far to become uh, I what some people would call success. But you know, uh, there are a lot of uh, miles to go. This is just the beginning. and uh, once growth change has formed you know like all our heads are put together you know like to bring up solutions and we have uh, in fact clients from different different uh, you know like cities like you know we have tier 1 city bangalore you know tier 2 cities like kochi and all and uh, chennai is there and we even have uh, clients from shimoga which is i can say is a tier 3 city and we have clients from sri lanka and in fact right now uh, my partner uh, raj shekharan is actually is involved in a project in berlin okay for a for a furniture a online furniture um, you know initiative so today we have we are not uh, just look, uh, focusing on automobile alone because we have people from different uh, uh, i can tell you different uh, walks of life different professions uh, we have uh, but we have a humble uh, size of 10 people in our team okay and um, uh, you know more than the you know being a, a commercial organization i would say we are um, more driven by passion okay and uh, of course uh, result oriented activities that's what i can proudly say okay we help many companies to help improve their revenues their work their volumes uh, their employee satisfaction through our customized incentive programs and if even we have come out with uh, some you know like digital um you know uh, have you know like support like dashboards digital where you know uh, the 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 parameters of a service center like you know whether it is labor whether it is labor per pay or spares per pay or whatever it is we are looking into even the ceo can get it in on his mobile okay he can get the warnings whether the figures are falling or you know like what it is and of course it can, we call it as g uh um, indicators and g stands for growth change by the way and then you know like we give g inference like you know what what can you infer because the ceo need not necessarily know about what is happening in service okay so you know like can g inference can come and we also give them some g online support also like you know online support consultancy things like that so growth change is all about you know like even as the word uh, indicates it's all about growing and changing you know like growth requires change there is no doubt on that and change is the only constant thing in the world everyone knows but you know another thing is as you change you will grow and as you grow also you need to change like you know i can't wear the same shirt i used to wear when i was 20 year old you know because i have grown so like that you know we have to change when we grow and we have to grow we, we if you want to grow we have to change too i can let me go to an example there is some i am not naming any um, restaurant there are some restaurants you know like where i think shrikanth would have definitely seen Uh, by around three or two o'clock or three o'clock, three o'clock maybe, all the chairs are put on the table, and the floor is will, will be washed, you know. And after that, the chairs will be put on. And this hotel and uh, the the bearers of this hotel will be roaming around, 
uh, in not so good dress and all and they will be uh, walking around you know like this is a culture this is what is we call culture even when they start a chain of these restaurants some some restaurants will call, have the name new also before the actual name you know new dash you know that name will be there but still you can make out this is the very same culture by seeing these chairs going on top of the table during cleaning okay so it's it's all because they are not changing they are growing ambience wise they have grown but the but the hardware has changed but the software is still the same okay so you know it it's all about growing and changing and uh, we always uh, aim for the well being of the client you know like uh, very very important and uh, we work uh, in unison with them you know like that's how we uh, get the things done through grow change see actually if you ask me like you know grow change global i think has now grown to you know uh, grown to a maturity level of seeing much beyond the automobile industry it became uh, an automobile oriented uh, consultancy group just because uh, it was uh, you know spearheaded by hari krishnan or sushil kumar uh, like that okay but um, you know today we have architects also in in our organization we have artists also in our organization okay we have uh, people from different different uh, you know um, uh, streams you know like it is all about helping uh, people helping the entrepreneurs you know through adding value from experience and it's all about you know like uh, get you know getting the right people we follow a concept called independent professional concept you know suppose there's an it is like you know free like a freelancer he can be with us okay so you know like our brains also are used their brains are also used so you know like uh, it, it is not like you know having an employee or having um, so focusing on just one sector like you know like um, rashegar is now supporting a furniture uh, online initiative okay so i can say we are into almost everything but not like you know trying to grab everything it is all about if you find the right person uh, now let me tell you shrikant if uh, i find that uh, you are the best in a particular uh, this i might come and ask help from you too because if i have the right client with me because it's all about you know like connecting people and trying to add value from whatever experience or knowledge we have okay that's fantastic so this company what is the kind of turnover that you do right now actually uh, not much let me tell you our turnover is uh, uh, around 2 crores right now in a year okay that's not much big but we don't like we don't have a uh, lot of investments or anything like that or two you know like uh, so it's all about uh, giving uh, you know consultancy support and of course our our uh, remuneration is all from uh, the actual tangible benefit the company earns the our client earns Okay. it is not like that we charge a fee like that and uh, then disappear and <laughs> that's fantastic no so uh, what is your message to the team so if they have to be successful in this industry so of course you have shared a lot of your success stories and secrets yeah. also but what is your message otherwise to uh, you know to changing industry have, if you see there has been a major change happening in the auto industry for you know in the last few years so in this uh, present situation what do you feel has to be done so that people can be successful in the auto retail industry yeah uh, if you ask me like from whatever i am seeing around uh, let me tell you as you rightly said the whole uh, scenario is changing not because of covid i am talking about pre covid let me just talk about pre covid and post covid if we can say so okay in pre covid period itself the nature of the customers are changing you know like uh, today uh, you know the premium cards are owned by uh, i can tell you the real rich people now if i can define what is real rich people those are people whose interest from fixed deposit itself is enough for their monthly expenses to take care of everything the, those people i call as real rich people okay so they are financially free they don't need to work for money so those people own premium cards but there is another segment of customers also who own the uh you know premium cards and all nowadays and they are young guys uh we you know like certain people call them henry like you know high earning not rich yet h e n r y high earning not rich yet they have enough uh, disposable income not like you know they have uh, cash in a fixed deposit or anything like that but they are earning a lot okay such people you know like gone are those days where people just go for an alto alone you know they are looking for higher cars and things and you know india is the youngest country now in the world 
where you know i think more than 50% of the people are less than 30 years of age so you know the 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 outlook of customer has changed earlier days you know if uh, if an um, a customer who comes to our uh, you know um, uh, outlet or facility will be 40 plus years old today i have 22 year old guy coming in as a proud owner of belino or maybe a, a better car you know bigger or premium car his expectations are totally different you know i can say they have a no nonsense attitude okay they have an unforgiving attitude also if you know something happens uh, not that good if he is a 45 50 year old guy i can definitely tell sir sorry sir you know like that and all but this 22 year old guy is not going to listen to that you know he's he, he, you know, so it is it is different the young gen you know i, I don't know what to call them whether the millennials or you know whatever name i know don't you know the, the, the attitude is different uh, you can't play around with them and they are well connected everything they know you know in the mobile itself they know everything what this uh, you know the smartphone tells them what is exactly happening and what should i expect and all so i think you know we need to be more sensitive you know and uh, uh, to their needs you know so i think uh, that transformation has to happen in the minds of uh, uh, the service sector people okay and i think uh, what they are uh, looking is all about confidence quotient the customer confidence quotient is like you know if i can tell some more words with c again they are looking for convenience they are looking for credibility they are looking for cost effectiveness and of course everyone uh, looks for care also okay these are things are all there so you know how you can uh, you know the credibility convenience like you know i know customers who say that i can give the car for service only after 10 o'clock in the night but i can have to get it back by 6 o'clock in the morning so you can't say that you know my workshop starts at 9 o'clock and uh, is uh, like only up to 6 o'clock or 7 o'clock so that convenience part second the customer doesn't want to bring the car to the service center pick up service and things like that okay so there also the convenience part comes okay so these are i would say and the convenience in making the payments nowadays okay nowadays it is all you know the simple google pay and things like that are all there now the second thing is credibility friends credibility in the sense you know like the trust part how do i know that you know this particular work is being done so you know very soon apps will be there where you know you can see the old engine oil being drained out and the new engine oil being put everything you know it is visible like live by the customer who can see earlier i remember in 1990s people say you know your, your service center is like ice, I, I, you know uh, i would say um, i see um, intensive care room where you take the car and you don't know what comes out you know the dead body comes or the person comes like you don't know i don't know what is being done in the car okay then we uh, you know that was the time in those days you know now, but now uh, the customer really wants to know what is happening so there can be apps where you can show the live things happening and then the cost effectiveness everybody is looking into that also and the care but let me tell you one thing this confidence quotient today post covid has changed in the sense uh, i'll just give you a small example uh, you know like there is a, um, uh, a mobile phone outlet a good uh, display outlet uh, where i just wanted to go i just called them and i said how can i come yeah yeah everything is okay sir but there was a friend of mine there he said you know sir better you come after some days why because this particular mobile outlet is located near the passport office so all the nris all the you know like um, uh, people are coming there and when they find that the queue is bit long in the passport office they come and flock inside this mobile uh, center where they can play around with all the mobiles touch and feel and things like that so he said you know we are very much worried because i don't know whether this is more prone to covid or not this particular environment so similarly a customer has got the feeling in mind whether it is it is okay for me to bring the car to this place so i think we need to uh, really gear up to create a, a boost the confidence quotient in people like providing with that service and ecosystem is like a hospital where every person equipment activity is sanitized by optimal disinfection so our whenever feedback is given to customers for the work in progress focus on increasing the customers uh, cq should be there even door pick up delivery as i told hygiene related optics of the dealerships it goes to be there the touch point ecosystem you know will be replaced by touch screen uh, ecosystems and let leaders which should be focused on innovative ways of projecting and uh, implementing it you know you, we can definitely learn some useful lessons from practice of players like ola uber swiggy etc so as a curator growing global feels that covid is an opportunity friends to move towards a higher state of wellness among all concerned we also feel that the decade will see the emergence of uh, a cw 
in business organizations like a chief wellness officer i can tell you like a chief finance officer chief operating officer like you know, we can we can definitely might be seeing a chief wellness officer also so any anyway, far sighted entrepreneurs and decision makers will transform these obstacles i am sure into opportunities now our success mantra in this era i can tell you uh, will be the evolution of a new meaning for the dreaded word covid c o v i d contactless online driven value enhancing infection free door delivered ecosystem that's all i want to tell you okay that's that's the um, ma- mantra and uh, so you can't you know gone are the days of information age where information everybody gets at the tip of his finger this is the era of implementation whoever is implementing becomes successful so the implementing the mantra to the extent it's possible in the most practical and optimal way is one which gives all of us uh, again a surge of uh, Uh, success and growth thank you right so that was fantastic to have you on our show in fact and uh, you know uh, the amazing uh, you know details that you've given so of course i'm sure the team will find it useful and we will use this to our growth and success in this industry so team with that let's bid goodbye to pro hari krishnan and we will catch up on our next episode on next sunday so till then this is shrikant rajan signing off goodbye